answers to the heavens. So Allah spoke about his face in the Quran. Then Allah said, وَلَا تَمُدَّنَّ عَيْنَيْكَ إِلَى مَا مَتَّقْنَا بِهِ Don't stretch an envious eye to the glamour and the embellishments of this world. So Allah spoke about his eyes in the Quran. Then Allah Ta'ala said, فَإِنَّمَا يَسَّرْنَاهُ بِلِسَانِ We'll make the Quran easy on your tongue. So Allah spoke about his blessed tongue. Then Allah said, وَلَا تَجْعَلْ يَدَكَ مَغْلُونَةً إِلَى عُنُقِ Don't tie your hands to your neck. So then Allah spoke about his neck. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, أَلَمْ نَشْرَحْ لَكَ الصَّدْرَ have I not opened your bosom? So Allah spoke about his bosom. وَوَضَّعْنَا عَنْكَ وِزْرَكَ And we've removed the burden الَّذِي أَنْقَضَ الظَّهْرَكَ Which had burdened your back. So Allah spoke about his back. Then Allah said, هُوَ يَرَاكَ حِينَ التَّقُومِ I'm watching you when you're standing. وَتَقَلُّبَكَ فِي السَّاجِدِينَ And I equally watch you while you are prostrating. Then Allah Ta'ala said, فَإِنَّكَ بِأَعْيُنِنَا O Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you are constantly in my eyes. Does Mufassirin say there is no Nabi whose limbs and organs enjoy detailed mention in the Quran of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Such is the profoundness of our Nabi. Such is the caliber. Anyway, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, these two grouping among the spouses, the Aisha and Hafsa Rabbi Allah said, we, we, we've got to do something with this. Every day, honey, 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 doesn't work like this here. You know, we need to do something. So they, they literally, with respect to our mothers, we have the greatest of respect and regard, and we only restrict ourselves to the context of the hadith, as the hadith tells us. They plot amongst themselves. And they say, and I don't have to tell you when women plot to convince a man. So like you come back home from work, and you're tired and you're exhausted, and she's all dressed up. Where are you off to? We're going to the mall. I'm tired, and I just want to drop and pass out. And you drop on your bed, and in 15 minutes you're in that car driving to the mall. And when and how and who and what, only Allah knows. Fifteen minutes. How did she? Was it a spell? Was it a spell? But you are up, whether moody and bloated and pulled up, lemon face or smiling, whatever it is that you're going. Anyway, they planned the same thing. Again, the character. We spoke about snippers. If my time would have permitted, I would have gone into more dimensions. More dimensions of the life. My aim, my message, my words, my, my, my exhortation is we have to go back to the noble life of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and we have to read it, study it, internalize it and execute it. Then only we are making a step. And really, like the Arabic poet said, you would rather be, you would rather be like a rabbit on the correct path or like, than a deer on the wrong path. Or like a tortoise. خَيْرٌ insan. It is better for a human to be a tortoise on the right road than a deer on the wrong road. You know, we go often hunting, three weeks ago we went hunting also, there's a very good brother in South Africa that takes us, and you see how this springbok, and you see how these deer, and you see how these antelopes, you see how they run, and if one runs, the herd runs, and they run and run and run. You better off walking the pace of a tortoise on the right road than running the pace of a deer on the wrong road. Everything must be quick today. And unfortunately we are running the wrong direction. One day we are going in the traffic, my son was very small and it's completely congested. The opposite lane obviously is fine. So he's like, Dad, why don't we just go on that side? My son, we're going this way. We could go on that side, that's brilliant, but we're not in the direction, and we'll flow, there's no traffic. We'd rather move an inch and we'll get to our destination. So I hope you pick up some points, even if you take one, and you internalize it. Him as he, his relation to his seniors, to his juniors, or as we're discussing to his spouses. On the lighter side, they say, you know, English grammar. You have one mouse, Many mice, one spouse, many spice. As it is, they say, you've got to spice up the relation. Those are the terminology that they use. You've got to spice up the relation. Someone was telling me about this, you know, you get this oxymoron, where this contradiction, sweet, sour, deafening silence, and then what they say, fully empty, pretty ugly, act naturally, act naturally, and the mother of them all, happily married. Deafening silence. That's deafening silence. What? 
sweet sour, pretty ugly, truly empty. I said, but the best of them all, happily married. So here comes the, the two spouses, utmost respect and regard. They say, we're going to put a plot together. When the Prophet ﷺ comes home tomorrow from them, you just maintain one thing, we'll tell him that with respect, we're getting a bit of a foul smell from your mouth when we saw some. And he was very sensitive to foul smells. So obviously they knew which button to press. The Prophet ﷺ was very, very sensitive. He was very sensitive and he said, don't give me raw garlic. And he said, whoever eats raw garlic, don't come to my masjid. فَإِنَّ الْمَلَائِكَةَ تَتَعَذَّى مِمَّا يَتَعَذَّى مِنْهُ الْإِنسُ وَالْجِنِ That is why the, the, the scholars say, no human, no human has benefited humanity in its entirety like Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said that raw garlic gives off an offensive smell and you are being insensitive to the presence of the angels. Please learn to respect angels as well. He displayed regard for the angels. He said, don't urinate in these ant holes. That poor ant will think there's floods. And it's a hot shower. He was cognizant of the ant. He said, don't offend the malaika. What a wholesome life he came. That is why it's very ironical that Surah Anbiya, Surah Anbiya is the chapter on prophets. And Allah is going out in description one after the other. Ibrahim was like this, I don't have the time, alayhi salam. And Dawood was like this, alayhi salam. And detail, detail. You would have thought, when the topic is prophets, the chapter is prophet, the discussion is the prophets, the prophet that will enjoy the lengthiest explanation will be Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. But to the contrary, Allah introduces Nabi sallallahu alayhi in the concluding verses of the chapter on prophets. And Allah only introduces him with one verse. Ibrahim alayhi salam, two pages. Dawood alayhi salam, whole one page. Nuh alayhi salam, one page. Maryam alayhi salam, half a page. Going on, Ismail, Idris, I don't have time. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam, the galaxy of the prophets, the cream of prophethood, the paragon of Allah's creation. He gets one line, and what does Allah say? وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, suffice to say for your accolade, your presence, your appearance benefited every atom, every iota, every creature on every planet. Every creature, every atom benefited from your coming. And today you and I hoard this formula. Leave those that are hoarding the Coke, Coke formula and hoarding this. And he's very secretive about his suppliers. And he's very, you are secretive about the formula of guidance of mankind. You are hoarding it. So anyway, the next day the Prophet Sallallahu goes to Aisha radiallahu anha. Akalta maghafir ya Rasulullah ulubi of Allah, what did you eat and come? He's getting a bit of a foul smell. I just had honey by Zainab. I'm getting a bit of a maghafir smell. The Prophet Sallallahu said, no, no, nothing but honey. Okay, one wife told you. He then goes to Hafsa radiallahu anha. Ulubi of Allah, akalta maghafir. Looks like you ate something and came. Now, you know, the first person telling you, hey, you picked up a bit of weight, now I know what you mean. The next time you meet, hey, what's happening? You're getting torn around your waist. Now suddenly you, you become a bit conscious because two, three people are driving a common and then the wife telling you about it becomes more sensitive. Nabi Sassim said, I don't know, you are telling me this year, Aisha is saying this year, I had honey, okay, I'm not going to have honey again, but don't tell Zainab that I'm not going to have honey because it's going to offend her. So I won't have this because you say I'm eating something else. I respect what you say. And then I won't, uh, don't tell her so that in this way we appease all. Anyway, all done. He said he won't have it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the verses. And firstly Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala admonished him and said, Ya ayyuhan nabi lima tuharrimu ma ahallallahu laka tabtaghi marbata azwajika wallahu ghafoorur raheem. O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, why do you make something forbidden which Allah has made lawful for you? Merely to secure the happiness of your partners, you cannot alter with, with that which has been made lawful and make it unlawful. If a person abstains from the lawful, as a discipline, as dietary, as health reason, that's a separate thing. But you cannot make it forbidden when Allah has made it lawful. 
Now the Prophet ﷺ realizes that that wife had divulged the information. Nabi ﷺ told it to Hafsa radiallahu anha and told Hafsa, don't tell anyone. Don't tell anyone. I told you this, the fastest ways of communication. Television, tell a woman, and telecommunication. And even faster, tell her not to tell anyone. Anyway, the point that I want to say here is how Nabi Sassim conducted himself. This is, this is the critical point here. Just, just, just keep focus here. What a sensitive thing. How did he deal? Euphemism. Inexplicit. Blended. A bit mild. Cut down. Reduced the intensity of the chastisement. So, وَإِذْ أَسَرَّ النَّبِيُّ إِلَىٰ بَعْضِ أَزْوَاجِهِ حَدِيثًا فَلَمَّا نَبَّأَتْ بِهِ وَأَظْهَرَهُ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ عَرَّفَ بَعْضَهُ وَأَعْرَضَ عَنْ بَعْضٍ فَلَمَّا نَبَّأَهَا بِهِ قَالَتْ مَنْ أَنْبَأَكَ هَذَا Listen to this here. Because Hafsa رضي الله عنها and he says, I'm just giving you the loose translation because time is against us. He says, uh, Hafsa, uh, we had agreed that that's a secret. Uh, do we still maintain the relation or has this leaked out of your minds and your discussion into someone else? So, this is what he says. When Asarra Nabiyu, when a Nabi confines with his wife, إِلَىٰ بَعْضِ أَزْوَاجِهِ حَدِيثًا فَلَمَّا نَبَّعَتْ بِهِ when he informs her, فَلَمَّا نَبَّعَتْ بِهِ وَأَظْهَرَهُ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ and Allah informed him عَرَّفَ بَعْضَهُ وَأَعْرَضَ عَمْ بَعْضُ to minimize the embarrassment of his wife because she had defaulted in this contract he didn't spell out the graphic details to her that Hafsa, I have been told by Jibreel in the form of Quran that you, the daughter of Umar, have taken the bold step to go to my other wife and spell out everything when I had categorically told him not to do so why did you do? No the hadith, the Quran says, عَرَّفَ بَعْبَهُ He touched the topic, made her realize her wrong and moved on, giving her the perception he only knows so much. Allahu Akbar. He had to admonish her, but while admonishing, he was sensitive to her emotions. If I have to admonish someone and I know they've done wrong, and I won't, I'll say, wait, I got footage. I'll bring you cameras. Wait, wait, sit here, my brother. Such I'll give you graphic details. And obviously this man is now looking for a place that he wants the earth to split. The, the scholar says, فَلَمْ يُخْبِرْ بِهِ تَكَرُّمًا Because of the profoundness of his character, he didn't add to the embarrassment of his wife, although she was wrong. And the scholars say, مَا زَالَتْ تَغَافِرْ مِنْ فِعْلِ الْكِرَامِ This has always remained the salient feature of the pious, that when they discipline and they admonish, they insinuate and hint, they are mild and bland and they're not loud and explicit, so that they minimize the pain and the agony and the victim of the wrong. Now can you imagine that? Then we say, you know what, go for therapy, go for psychology, go for this year, they will teach you how to interact, they'll give you skills, they'll give you ten key rules, five do's, five don'ts. Leave that study the life of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Whatever you do, they, you know, they give you all these philosophical, flowery things. Practically, this is the life that we have. And Imam Shafi Rahmatullah Ali said it so beautifully, تَغَمَّدْنِي بِنُسْحِكَ فِي الْفِرَادِ وَجَنِّبْنِي النَّسِيحَةَ فِي الْجَمَاعَةِ فَإِنَّ النُّسْحَ بَيْنَ النَّاسِ نَوْعٌ مِنَ التَّوْبِيخِ لَا أَرْضَى إِسْتِمَاعَهُ What did he say? تَغَمَّدْنِي بِنُسْحِكَ فِي الْفِرَادِ Oh my brother, if you know how to advise, and you can do it with the correct etiquettes in seclusion, then don't give me one word, show me with hours of advice. But don't admonish me even with a letter in public. Don't admonish me with a letter in public. Because advising me in public is actually ridiculing me. It comes across in a condescending way, in a disgraceful way. You're humiliating me. La arba istima'ahu. My ears don't have the ability to listen. 
But if you have the time and you have the maturity, that is why scholars have written, if you have to discipline your child, at least let there be the interval of one prayer.